So if you didn't watch the first two parts, this is a great place to start. I bought an old Honda and went on a 10,000 mile solo road trip for 65 days. I first drove east through Nevada and Arizona, was pulled over by a police, had a puncture in my tire, lost my drone to a tree, drove into a wildfire, got my car stuck in the sand. And now you are up to date on the story. If you want to support this channel and future videos, you can subscribe, comment or like, but no pressure. Back to the story, in the very beginning I was trying to dig out the front tires by myself until I realized the sand was way too hot for my hands and I wasn't making any progress at all. So I abandoned my car and started asking for help. I have to say I was and still am a very lucky guy because the first car I stopped happened to be a huge Jeep Wrangler from North Carolina. And the driver was so kind and so knowledgeable about cars he had all the tools we need to get my car out. I mean, he even managed to fit a drawer full of tools in his Jeep. And the rest was history. We got the car out in no time. I don't have his name or his picture, but I still want to shout out to this awesome guy and the people from North Carolina. My motel was in a small village called Big Water. It was sitting on the Utah-Arizona border, surrounded by unearthly mountains, and only had about 475 residents. There are many advantages to staying in big water instead of page. The room is way cheaper, time is one hour ahead of Arizona. And more importantly, you get to experience the true American wilderness. I mean the kind you could only find in Jack London's book or BBC documentaries. After I came back from Long Rock Beach, I made a simple dinner with my rice cooker. Cut my hair in the bathroom, took a shower, put some clean clothes on, and went outside to explore. The sun was setting, the landscape was breathtakingly vast and empty. At the back of the motel, I found a stable with one horse. We looked at each other in silence, both enjoying the sunset. The place was very spiritual. I felt like the wind was blowing through me. Mountains were whispering to each other and my soul was getting lighter and lighter. At this point, I'd say Big Water is equally as mind-blowing as the Grand Canyon. The next day, I was told the Antelope Canyon was closed due to the pandemic. But at the same time, I found a binder laying on a small desk by the entrance of the motel. Turned out it was a list of things to do in big water. And I found this place called Toadstool Rock, not too far away. And just like that, I went to the most Martian place I've ever been to in my life. Better still, it was completely free and had absolutely no visitors. I mean, if this rocks doesn't look alien to you, you are probably alien. Toadstool Rock also wrapped up my trip in Arizona slash Utah. I had such a great time. New Mexico, here comes Jing Wu. But before that, I'd like to be a good Forrest Gump fan and have a quick layover in Monument Valley. The drive was as rough as it could get, and just a quick reminder for all the T-Mobile users out there, unfortunately your phone won't work in that region. So you better don't close your navigation app, otherwise I assure you, you wouldn't be able to drive out of that desert alive. Well, I, uh, I learned it the hard way. Anyway, Monument Valley was quite something, and I was very surprised that there were still people running the Forest Gump route. So, kudos to those runners, because I can't imagine myself running under such condition. It takes about 5 hours to drive from Monument Valley to Albuquerque, and I had already driven 2.5 hours in the morning from Big Water to Monument Valley. So I decided to take a break at a county in Navajo Nation called Kenyanta. Filled the tank, cleaned up the bugs on the windshield, finally found a mall with free Wi-Fi, and had some leftover meal on the truck. People here were mostly indigenous, and they treated me quite nicely. After the break, I started driving again. The day was getting hotter and hotter on my way to Albuquerque, and the water mirage was everywhere on the road. For those of you who are not familiar with this term, here is a quick explanation. The roads are mostly gray or black, 
when the day is hot, the rows are heated significantly, and then the rows will heat up the air directly above them, creating a pocket of warm, less dense air below cooler and denser air. When light reaches this air pocket, which is above the road, the speed of photon increases slightly, causing its path to alter, and this makes the road ahead look like a puddle of water. But in reality, this water is only a reflection of the sky. I love optical illusions. In total, I drove nearly eight hours that day from Big Water all the way to Albuquerque. Now I'm a more experienced driver who can drive for 14 hours straight. But back then, eight hours already broke my record. I was very proud of myself and was so exhausted when I finally checked in my Airbnb. Speaking of my Airbnb, I have nothing but praise for it. The host was very nice and welcoming. My room was unbelievably clean and comfy. And guess how much it cost per night? Only $28. I made some pasta and spent the rest of the night drinking icy cold beers and watching my favorite Chinese movie, If You Are The One. My lord, that night was unforgettable. The next day, I made a day trip to Santa Fe, not only because it's the nation's highest state capital, but also because my favorite writer George R. R. Martin lives here. Although I didn't get to meet him in person, I did go to his bookstore, Beastly Books. I mean, come on, the store has Viserion and Regal on its wall. High Garden Entertainment, as the name of the company. A cushion with Jon Snow's quote on it and the Iron Giant as a guard. Honestly, if that ain't beastly, I don't know what is. And the scary part of the bookstore is that you wouldn't be able to find Drogon anywhere. And a missing Drogon is a ticking bomb, if you know what I'm saying. And the weird part of the bookstore is that I could never relate High Garden with entertainment at all. I don't know about you guys, at least I couldn't. Being the only guest of the store, I bought a cup of coffee, used the staff-only bathroom that George had certainly used, and spent a whole hour sipping coffee reading my favorite chapters, such as The Kimbreaker and Victorian. I believe I've already read these chapters for at least 20 times, if not more, but you know what? Every time feels like the first time. Stories like A Sound of Ice and Fire can travel in time and space, and I hope one day I can read something as glorious. Anyway, I enjoyed that one hour thoroughly, bought four autographed books, and left that cute little store satisfyingly. Then I drove to George Martin's house. Of course, I didn't go in, but it was enough for me to know that I was once that close to him, and his mastermind was bracing the same air I was bracing. By the way, his house is really low key. The only thing that stands out is perhaps his mailbox. It's a lovely castle with tiny purple flags on it. I then had lunch at a cowgirl barbecue restaurant. I swear I'm not exaggerating, but their fried carp was unrealistically delicious. Soft, fresh, and had a special sweetness to it. Santa Fe is lovely. Cute adobe houses are everywhere, people are friendly, food is good, and it has a peculiar vibe of mystery. New Mexico was burning hot in the summer, but I couldn't care less. I was having a blast. Alright, I should perhaps stop this part of the story here. I thought I was gonna cover my adventures in Texas in this episode, but this one is quite long right now. So, thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, subscribe, comment, and like would be very helpful. If you have any questions, you can either leave a comment or hit me up on my Instagram at Jing Wu Show. I promise the next part will be out as soon as possible.